Hello, I'm Charlotte Leesman. Welcome back to the Gothic Literary Society. Today we are talking about a classic Gothic trope that actually shows up in a lot of different types of genres in movies and books, and that would be what I call the helpless heroine. So this is a character who is powerless in one respect or another. And in addition to that, we're going to talk about three different types of powerlessness, two which are always acceptable and appropriate and which will be well received by readers and one which is pretty much guaranteed to ruin your story. If you know much about gothic writing, you know that the helpless heroine goes all the way back to the beginning. So in the castle of Toronto, you had the Princess Isabella, and she was pitted against her fiancé's father, Manfred, and he was out to get her for any number of different reasons. And it was only because of the friar, Jerome, and another man, Theodore, that she was able to escape. Later in writing history, we see in Dracula, Mina Murray. And now Mina was actually a very bright and very enterprising young woman. So she was a little bit more of a cross in between the modern woman and Isabella. Isabella was predominantly helpless in pretty much every way. But Mina was able to think her way through a lot of different things, but still it was really only the band of men who came around her who were able to rescue her from the clutches of Dracula. And then more recently we have an example, of course, Bella Swan from Twilight, and she is a helpless heroine in many ways, some of which did not work very well from the reader's perspective, and in some ways we can sympathize with her still. So we're going to talk about what didn't work with her and basically how to make your characters, when they are helpless, how to make them palatable to readers and how to make them relatable. The first type of powerlessness is what I would call physical weakness. Now, there are any number of situations in which your character is just physically weaker than maybe all the characters around them, or perhaps only the antagonist. So, for example, in, outside of the gothic sphere, in the movie Thor, if you remember Natalie Portman's character, Jane Foster, Jane was a brilliant woman, very charming, very likable, and yet... There's no way she's going to be able to defeat Loki on her own. She just hasn't got the superhuman strength that would be required to go against that kind of antagonist. So, of course, it was up to Thor to do that. And yet we still like Jane. We understand that she's physically weaker than her foes. And there's a reason why we're okay with her. And we're going to get to that at the end. The second example is Ben Mears from Stephen King's book Salem's Lot. If you remember, the vampire moves into Jerusalem or Salem and he is hell-bent on destroying and using all of the people in the city. And it is up to Ben and a few others to try to take him down. There's no way that an individual natural human being is going to be able to wage war on a vampire on his playing field. Of course, there's no way. And readers don't expect that because a vampire has certain physical advantages that are always going to be greater than a human's advantages. So that was perfectly acceptable. Also, if you've read Anne Rice's book, Queen of the Damned, and you remember Jesse Reeves. So she plays a very central role. She is human. There are a number of vampire characters in that book. And yet, Jessie is very likable. She's very relatable. She is in a situation in which she knows what she's up against, and yet she, of course, is not able to take on any of these vampires, should she want to, on her own. And yet, readers are okay with that, of course, because of some other characteristics that Jessie's got going for her. A second type of powerlessness is what I call situational weakness. So this is obviously circumstantial. So say, for example, your character has just been diagnosed with cancer, or his business partner has just embezzled all of the funds out of their business and has run off with his wife. Or, for example, a woman or even or a man is in a domestic abuse situation. Or someone has just been unjustly imprisoned or kidnapped or any number of things. I think you get the idea. And I think 
also by looking at situational weakness, what we can see is the helpless heroine extends so much wider than simply gothic writing. A really good example of this would be Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. The second Mrs. de Winter has married Maxim and now she finds herself in this house where she isn't sure whether she is on equal footing with her husband, she isn't sure whether he really loves her, and she is basically at odds with the housekeeper who runs everything there. So she is in a situation in which she is by and large powerless. She has nowhere she could go. She has no family living. She has no means of her own financially. So that is a type of situational weakness. The third type of powerlessness is what I call character weakness. And by this I do not mean a character who has a flaw. And this is not a character who is in a negative character arc. So for example the picture of Dorian Gray is a really good example. Dorian Gray is descending from a a high point to a lower point in his character development. And that is not what we're talking about when we're talking about character weakness, at least in this context. What we're talking about is a character who does not fight against his or her circumstances. And that, by and large, was what readers disliked those who did dislike Bella Swan. That's what they did not like about her. So if you look at Bella Swan, she did try at one point to befriend Jacob and to forget about Edward after he had moved on. But in a sense, that was only because her father's prompting, and it was a half-hearted attempt, or at least it came across as half-hearted. And that is what readers do not like. If I were to rework Bella Swan's character in order to make her a stronger character, I would find several avenues for her to try a lot harder to get over Edward. And what would be most interesting Interesting is not to see her brooding over her lack of Edward or her helplessness against the other vampires. What would be most interesting would be if she had tried to do it on her own. That would really capture audience's attention. So if she had tried consistently to come up with ways to battle the Volturi on her own or to battle Victoria and the other enemy vampires, or if she had tried really hard to move on with her life and to pursue her future college career, it could be anything really, without Edward, and then if she had failed repeatedly, that would have really been something because you would have seen Bella trying a whole lot of avenues on her own. You would have seen her trying to pick herself up and trying to move on, and she really didn't do that very much. And that is really what doesn't go over with readers, because what readers really want to see is a struggle. They want to see character growth, and character growth that comes out of character struggle. And so a character who's in a bad situation, or a character who's physically weaker, but is still fighting against his or her situation, like, for example, Ben Mears in Salem's Lot, or Jesse Reed in Queen of the Damned. Those characters were actually trying to do something, regardless of the fact that they were pitted against a foe who was so much stronger. They were still attempting to change their circumstances, and that is what readers respect. So all that to say, there are going to be many times in which you're going to want to have a character in a powerless situation. It's realistic. It's something that readers relate to. It's something that we can all respect and understand and yet you need to have your character fighting against his or her circumstances. You need to have that character trying every avenue of escape and yet failing. And that's really what will make it so much more interesting to readers when the character does finally succeed is because you will know that he or she has really grown and has really learned from his mistakes. The helpless heroine is a very important trope, whether it's in gothic writing or in any number of other genres. Go ahead and write your helpless characters, make him or her relatable, but have him fight against his circumstances so that we can respect him and so that we can really root for him and really rejoice when he finally triumphs in the end. That's it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. That way you'll be notified every time I release a new video. I post videos on Fridays. So until next time, stay undead, my friends.